So we have the strength, the magnitude of this force vector, but we need to put it into Cartesian vector form. We need to have i's, j's, and k's for this vector. And our fourth step in doing that is we need a position vector going from a to b here. So we need to make a position vector going from a to b. And the way we do this is we basically do our final point b, it's our final point, minus our initial point a. It's really as easy as that. Final minus initial. Our force vector is going from a to b. It's directed towards b. So b is our final, a is our initial. Just make sure you don't flip it. It's, it, will, it will not be a minus b. So we can find the coordinates of b no problem. b is on the yz plane, so that's going to be 0 in the x. We have this 5 feet in the y direction. And we have 12 feet in the z direction. So plus 12 k hat. And after a right here, got to be a bit careful here. Looks like we have a right triangle going on here. This length right here, that will be the x-coordinate. So that's going to be the adjacent of this right triangle. It's going to be hypotenuse 5 times the cosine of 40. And it's in the positive x direction, so I give it a positive sign. Here is our length in the y direction, 8 feet, in the positive y. It looks like this opposite side here will be the z component. So going back to that right triangle, we'll do 5 times the sine of 40 to get that opposite. And that looks like it's going in the positive z direction. Just be very careful. 5 here, a lot of people will look at that 5 and think that is the x-coordinate. But no, here, here we have this door here. This door is rotating about this hinge point. The door, let's just say, rotates this way. That door creates a circle. And the radius of that circle is the 5. So this is 5. This is 5. But the x-coordinate is like this right here. This is the x-coordinate, and this right here is the z-coordinate. And here's our point A right there. So just be careful. Don't mistake that 5 for the x-coordinate of point A. So now that we have the coordinates of B and A assembled, we can just do subtraction. We'll do 0 minus 5 cosine 40, 5 minus 8, and etc. So once we do that math, we'll get our position vector from A to B. Which again is this vector right here in blue. So we can get the length of this chain by just calculating the length also known as the magnitude of this vector. And we can just do that by using the Pythagorean theorem, the sum of the squares of my components. And of course, the square root of that. And if I crunch that math, I'll get 10.05 feet. And we'll see that this is needed information to help us convert this position vector to the force vector. So what we're going to do is this. What we have right now is we have some position vector, RAB. What we're going to do first is we're going to divide this vector by its own magnitude, by 10.05. Remember what it means to multiply or divide a vector by a scalar. We're going to take each one of the components, as well as the length, and, it, and divide it by 10.05. What that results in is a vector 
whose length is 1. And this will be a unit vector in the a, b direction. Once we have that, we're going to multiply this unit vector by the magnitude of our force, 50. And doing so will lengthen this purple unit vector into the force vector, whose length will be 50. What, what this all comes down to is knowing how to take a scalar and multiply it or divide it into a vector. So here I am taking each component of that position vector and dividing it by this number. And of course I take the length of that position vector and divide it by that same number as well. And that results in our new vector being of length 1. I mean that's what a position vector really is. Just a vector whose length is 1. So let me just compute the components of our unit vector here. So here's my unit vector. So now we're going to do the same concept, but this time I'm going to multiply a scalar into this unit vector. So I'm going to take 50, the magnitude of our force over here, multiply it through each component as well as the magnitude, and that will lengthen that unit vector and create for us the full force vector whose length is 50 and whose components you're about to find out. So if I do that, I'll get these force components, i, j, and k, and of course the magnitude, the length of this force vector, we already knew. That's the 50 pounds. So we've now successfully assembled that force vector as a Cartesian vector, and now we just need to determine its coordinate direction angles, alpha, beta, and gamma. And here we just have to remember what alpha and beta and gamma are. They give the direction for any 3D vector, not just force vectors, any 3D vector you have, three, these three angles together give the complete direction. So the cosine of alpha will equal the x component of that vector over the magnitude, the length of that vector. And we have similar statements for beta and y and gamma and z. So we just have to substitute our force values in here. And just a quick note, because our position vector, our unit vector, and our force vector are all in the same directions, they're all literally on that same line pointing the same way, we could do this process on any one of them and get the same alpha, beta, and gamma. So we'll use it on the force vector here. So now that I have that loaded, all I have to do is three inverse cosines. And we'll get 112.46 for alpha, 107.37 for beta, and 29 degrees for gamma. And of course, here is our full out Cartesian vector for that force AB. So we are done with this question. All right, hope it made sense. Feel free to ask any questions you may have in the comments.